Hey everyone, it's Denise here, NOLA Collectibles, and welcome to my channel. Um, today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I actually had an unbagging totally planned to share with you guys from my local thrift store, but uh, this morning I decided to go hit some estate sales. And so, um, spring season's kind of rolling around here at 70 degrees already. It was a beautiful day, and folks are really um, ramping up their garage sales and their estate sales. So, um, there were two really fabulous estate sales right near my house house so of course I had to go and one of them started at 10 o'clock it didn't even start at like 8 a.m. It started at 10 o'clock so I have to go of course um, and, and just looking at the preview photos and everything it looked really fabulous so I decided I'm going to be doing a haul on the um, estate sale finds that I purchased today because I'm really excited by them it was a fabulous sale and I so want to share it with you guys because I think you'll be excited as well by all the goodies all the vintage um, goodies that I found today. So anyway, if you're new here, thanks for tuning in. Um, NOLA Collectibles, I do a lot of unbaggings and unjarrings and um, hopefully I'll be doing some hauls a little bit more frequently. I need to get a little bit more into the habit of sharing that with you. Um, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. I'm a jewelry enthusiast and this is kind of like how I um, I share my love of jewelry with you guys. I've been this way, loving jewelry my whole life. Um, you know, back in New York, when I lived in New York on my lunch breaks, I used to go to the Diamond District, you know, just to browse. Um, so I've always been this way. And so uh, this is a great way for me to kind of share my passions with other folks. And, um, you know, I just really enjoy doing this. So I'm gonna get right into it. And I'm gonna start with the showstopper, one of the showstoppers, because why wouldn't I? Um, so, one of the pieces that I picked up today is this gorgeous um, Marcel Boucher piece right here, this gorgeous piece. Um, you know, of course, it's, it's costume jewelry, but um, Boucher is very high quality um, costume jewelry. And so stuff like this, this is likely from the 1950s, like 1955, mid-1950s to early 60s. And this was just to me like the most stunning piece ever. It's kind of like a lariat style. And it had these gorgeous faceted rhinestones centerpiece right here with square rhinestones. Just absolutely stunning. And then on top of that, it had this very detailed rhinestone clasp. Um, right here everything was intact gorgeous in perfect condition and um, just really stunning and right there on the back it is signed Beaucher so this was kind of like one of the first pieces I was very attracted to when I saw it and they were asking ten dollars for this piece so of course I snatched it up because that's an absolute steal and I didn't find this piece selling online in too many places I found it in like one or two places and it's selling for about two hundred and fifty dollars so um, I'm really pleased with that it's a stunning piece of jewelry and, and so different and so unique and not something you see every day and I think the fact that I wasn't able to find too many cops of it on online is a true testament to that so gorgeous gorgeous piece of jewelry super happy about that um, another piece that I found here that I just grabbed was um, the sterling silver seashell pendant and this just looked it's very sizable it's very heavy it's marked 925 on the back and this one was three dollars so of course I was gonna like snatch that one up that's a great deal what else where am I gonna go okay I picked up this little like Indian trinket box. It kind of looks like, a, like almost like a little pill where you put your pills in or I don't know, whatever doodads you feel like storing. I thought this was very cute. You know, I mean, they, they, they wanted a dollar for it. So I just kind of was going through all of the jewelry and saw that and just, you know, kind of put it in my stash. I, you know, I was looking at the preview pics because a lot of estate sales will do preview photos and it showed like two photos of jewelry. And when I got there, um, I found a little jewelry section and I, I went through and I was checking out and the woman said to me, oh, we have like four more boxes over there. Did you go through those? And I was like, what? So <laughs> I sat myself on the couch and started going through all of the jewelry. So uh, I definitely took my time, spent about over an hour going through pieces and just kind of built a little stash and they checked me out. They were really lovely folks. So I thought this was really cool. This is actually a JJ brooch and this one um, is the lion's face and you know lion motifs are very popular right now. A lot of the Ancline jewelry and Ancline 2 jewelry sells really well 
sells really well so I thought this was just a really cool modernist piece of jewelry JJ brooch and these kind of sell okay um, but this one was three dollars so I grabbed that Um, I grabbed this little, um, you know, Italian style glass beaded bracelet. This one they just wanted a dollar for, um, you know, and I've sold these in the past uh, online and this one's in red silk thread and it just has a really pretty um, Millefiori design Italian beads. And so for a dollar, I'm, I'm definitely, again, I'm not going to pass that up. I, I've, I've seen lots of necklaces. I've not seen too many bracelets. So I definitely snatched that one up for a buck. Okay, so I grabbed this. this is a very heavy um, Trafari gold tone paneled necklace. And um, so again, this is in it's in good condition and um, very whole and it's it's, it's a crown Trafari, which means it's an older piece of Trafari. And I thought this was different because it's almost like it's got that brutalist, that modern design sensibility to it. It's definitely chunky. It's a statement. I love the brushed gold tone aspect of it. And um, it's signed kind of like right here on the, on the hook. It's signed um, Crown Trafari. So I thought this was different, not something you see every day. And I, you know, I looked up comps on it and I couldn't find this exact necklace, but I thought it was gorgeous. I personally couldn't pass it up. And that dude was, um, he was $3. So that's a pretty fabulous piece of jewelry again what to me was like most amazing about this sale was just the jewelry that was there was like very like late 1950s and early 60s and just not pieces that you find um so you know that i i'm having a hard time even like finding comps on so um that's pretty exciting this to me this is just this was two dollars and this is a this is a Napier. So, you know, not as kind of like um, rare or or like worth a lot, ton of value, but I just love the look of this. I love tassels. I love that it's gold tone. Again, just in great condition. And um, this is very much my style. So I'm going to try it on and see how it looks on me. And it might be just something I end up keeping for my personal collection. But um, this dude was $2. And again, this was just gorgeous. Everything was like, you know, was bagged and organized here and they would write the prices on it. So he was $2 and I thought that that was totally worth it because um, it's in fantastic condition and I think it's very trendy and very current and now. So I love this piece and I thought it was a great buy. Just beautiful. I'm gonna go for a little pair of earrings here. And these were a pair of Listener um, Thermoset Lucite screw back earrings and these guys look like this and they have the beautiful kind of like thermoset in like an emerald green color gold tone in very good condition nice and shiny and 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 i mean really these look like they've almost not even been worn and i'm just like a sucker for thermoset jewelry i know this is doesn't doesn't have like a ton of resale value but i just love it so much i think it's just so different this is not jewelry we're ever going to see again. It's not going to come around. I also love moon glow. I'm a real sucker for moon glow. So this kind of, in a way, um, combines both of those things. And it was just in fantastic, beautiful conditioner condition. And these were listener. So I grabbed these for $2. Let me see. I'm going to grab, um, so there was a couple of like unmarked pieces that I did grab and these were a dollar and these are gigantic gold door knocker earrings with a um, kind of cabochon amethyst detail there. Very large, in great condition, very shiny. And these are, um, you know, just super statement looking earrings. Um, I think they're gorgeous. I love them. You know, they're also very heavy. Um, so not everyone's cup of tea, obviously, but I just think these are absolutely stunning. Um, and they remind me you know, just of those, that gorgeous statement, like 1960s jewelry with the round cabochons and, the, um, you know, the door knocker style. I just thought these were stunning. And like for a dollar, yep, of course I'm going to pick those up. Um, let's see, where should I go next? So we just did a pair of earrings. 
let's do so I grabbed this um, so this bag here was marked two dollars and um, I was just like okay looks like something kind of interesting in there and I took a I took a look at it and it's um, a crown trafari piece and it's a crown trafari plastic beaded necklace and it has this rhinestone centerpiece here which is very interesting because when you look at the back it's actually convertible to a brooch so I'll op go ahead and open that for you. It ends up being, it functions as a box clasp on the necklace. And so it's got two sides with box clasp closure. So you can take the um, centerpiece off and then you can just wear the centerpiece as a brooch on its own. So I thought that that was very unique and different. And you can see this guy, just beautiful kind of like Ceylon sapphire colored rhinestones and this robin egg blue gorgeous like centerpiece just absolutely stunning and I thought I had never seen anything like this and this one was marked um, crown trafari so the trafari with the little crown mark over the T is typically an older trafari mark so I thought that 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 was very different and not something I had seen before and again for two dollars um, I thought it was totally worth it. So I did a really quick search on that on eBay and um, Etsy and trying to find comps and I can only find one comp on, on eBay and it said it was like a rare 1950s Trafari piece and the price that um, this person had it listed for was $250. So again, I need to do a little bit more research. Maybe I'll look on Ruby Lane and um, on Worth Point to see if I can find some more comps, but $250 doesn't sound too bad to me. And literally it was the only listing I could find online. So again, $2 uh, for this beautiful piece that's very different and I have not seen before. Uh, yes, I was all over that. So I was like a kid at a candy store. This was like the most exciting estate sale ever. I just sat myself on that couch and just went through all of the jewelry. <laughs> and these people, they were like totally indulging me and they had, you know, they'd taken everything out of the boxes and there was a pile of boxes underneath the couch. And I was like, what are you guys doing with those boxes? And she was like, I don't know, why? And I'm like, can I take them? And, and so I actually did get a bunch of vintage jewelry boxes as well so I was um, really happy about that so really pretty like velvet lined ones and um, just different kinds of brands um, and I always need boxes you know I'm always shipping out stuff but um, to put a pair of beautiful earrings in a vintage jewelry box or a ring in a vintage jewelry box you really can't beat that kind of presentation that is not, it's something special you know you're not going to find that everywhere um, so this is another pair of listener earrings and these are screw backs and so just a faux pearl with a crystal rind, rind, rhinestone detail and they're screw backs and again these were like in fantastic beautiful condition look like they're nearly unworn and um you know nice to find listener like while I don't think that these have the highest you know kind of like resale value I did have thought these were beautiful and for two dollars yes they're they look like a they have a clover design so I like that aspect of it and just pretty two dollars listener sign yes absolutely Okay, so I had picked up this. It was marked three dollars, um, and this is what it looked like from the outside. And this is a this is a, another crown trafari piece, and I thought that this was just absolutely stunning. Um, brushed gold, this organic leaf design, and I really enjoyed these. I love this robin egg blue. To me, I'm like, this is like, I mean, does it not like reminiscent of Tiffany's? It just reminds you of Tiffany's. Um, but it's such a, like a yummy, delicious looking color. And I I just personally, I love blues in my jewelry. So when I see something like this, this just like calls out to me. So this one, again, was $3. And this is a beautiful crown trafari brooch um, with these organic twisted leaves and brushed gold. And this robin eggs blue cabochons nice beautiful rounds with a little bit of like a rhinestone crystal detail in between the cabs so this to me was very special I don't feel like I see a lot of trafari in this color scheme in perfect condition signed and just gorgeous so again I 
I did do a look up on this and I wasn't able to find this exact comp. Um, this person's jewelry was um, very old, all from the 50s and the late 50s. So um, I'm going to have to just continue to research this. I found semi-similar, but not exactly this piece. And generally they were going from like 55 to like $100. So again, I'm just very happy with that. It called to me. It's a beautiful piece of jewelry. I was all about it. So that was a beautiful, stunning purchase. Um, I'll go for another pair of earrings here. This is a pair, another pair of, um, this is also Crown Jabari brushed gold. These are clips, little clippies, clippies? Yes, these are clippies, um, Crown Jabari brushed gold, and these have blue and green rhinestone details there. And again, these were in perfect condition, no missing rhinestones, beautiful organic twisting shape, just stunning. I love the colors again. Like I said, I'm a sucker for blue and this mixes the blue and the green. And I just thought these were a really beautiful pair of elegant um, Crown Jafari earrings. And like, look at the back of the setting, how it's all open work there. And again, really fantastic condition given their age. And so for, I think these were $3. Yeah, I was gonna snatch these up. I really love these, beautiful. There were so many beautiful pieces of jewelry with gorgeous elaborate rhinestones. I just couldn't get over it. Like, you know, I'm like a magpie. I see some sparkly things and yep, I'm attracted to it. Just like that cliche. Um, so this, this pair, I thought these were marked. I think they are marked. They are. Okay. They're Coro. So this is a beautiful pair of coral, Coro rhinestone earrings as well. And this one has a beautiful pink Aurora Borealis stone with the pearls. And um, I love that these are almost like an ear crawler, like, you know, one's meant to go on the right side, one's meant to go on the left side. And, you know, they're unique to the ear that you put them on. Just stunning. Gorgeous condition. Again, clean, pristine, shiny. This person had the just impeccable jewelry taste. And um, the brands that they that I found there were just wonderful. And these, I just, again, I love the, the Aurora Borealis crystal there. Beautiful earrings, very feminine, pretty, nice size, not too huge, um, just lovely. So got those two. Ooh, I'm looking for their baggie. These were $2. I'm going to go for a necklace. So I, I, you know, I grabbed this one. This was marked $3 and it looked very interesting to me. And when I looked at it on closer inspection, um, I saw that it was marked um, on the back. And this is, let's see if I can get in close. This is Alice Cavaness. So, and these were just beautiful, elaborate, pastel colored beaded necklace from the late 50s to early 60s filigree design. I mean, this is just kind of like an Easter explosion for your neck. And just super unique. And, you know, this style with Alice Cavaness, you can't even find these anymore. I, I challenge you to like go online, try to find me some comps on this. You might find some that are kind of similar, but not quite this. Um, they're, vel they're very delicate. And like I said, this just looks like candy for your neck. You know, this beautiful filigree metal work, these glass beads, um, it's just stunning. And I, I couldn't believe that I found this in there and it was $3. Um, so I looked up, you know, I'm thinking this is about $125 um, to about $150 on this just because it's, it's quite rare. You don't find this jewelry anymore and it's certainly not in this the condition that this, this necklace is in. So again, I thought very unique and different and I, I love that that was Alice Cabanus. Just wonderful, really. Let me go, I'll go for this pair of earrings right here. 
And I saw these dudes, and you'll probably recognize them as well. These are little like lions, and um, these were marked for $2, and I thought they were super cute. Again, I love the lion motif, and I think a lot of people like it as well. And these were just laurel birch. So laurel birch, you know, popular in the 80s. She did a lot of enamel work jewelry, these pin, like you probably would spot her stuff if you saw it. It's very recognizable. She has like these fat cat enamel earrings that she does and pins and um, you know, they're, they're very detailed. So I thought these were adorable. These are lions and, and um, these were $2. So uh, quickly again, I saw pricing from, you know, 25 to $30. So I thought that that was a great little pickup. They're adorable. I love the lion motif. So that was fantastic. Where to go next? Oh, here's her brooch. So this brooch was $2 and I thought this was like a really unique kind of like free form modernist brooch. I love, I just love the shape on this, the look of it and this cascade of beautiful rhinestones just falling down the center of it. Um, again, you know, modernist and at the same time, very organic with the shape. I love all of these like individual little tubes here. And I thought that this was so cool. And so this is not a marked piece, but it feels substantial and well-made. And again, this is not something I feel like I see the style very much. So I picked it up. I thought it was very, very cool. It is very cool. Just unique and different and just a wonderful piece of jewelry. So um, totally, I think very worth it. And it was, it's very heavy. So that's cool. I'll go outside of jewelry just for a minute. And I picked up, you know, there was a, of course this person had tons and tons of jewelry. So there was tons and tons of jewelry boxes. So I did pick up this, what looks like some kind of carved horn or antler. Um, and it's kind of got like an Indian motif to it with a little bit of brass on it. I thought this was just really cool and it wasn't priced. I went to the register and asked them how much they wanted for it and they told me $4. So I grabbed this one as well, again, just because I thought this was very cool and different, nicely made. And so I grabbed this as well. It's very heavy. Right, I'm gonna go a pair of a little pair of earrings. So these ones were a um, dollar, and these are Boucher, and they are gold tone clip earrings in a brushed gold with a red rhinestone center and a red and clear rhinestone center. And you'll see the one on the right is unfortunately missing one little tiny stone, but. These are, I would say, what they call like Siam red crystals. And I would say that that's likely like a two, maybe like a one to two millimeter size stone. So I think I can definitely repair these. And for, for Boucher, for a dollar, I thought that this was a great little pickup as well. So these do have like a little, little bit of wear to them. But, and again, there's like the missing rhinestone, but I think... I can definitely repair them and for a dollar, I'm, I'm definitely gonna pick those up. I'm gonna save these guys from, I don't know, whatever fate they may have faced if they if I didn't come along to purchase them because again, likely from the 1950s, late 1950s, possibly early 60s. This is an oldie and a goodie and a gorgeous purchase. I mean, look at the way that the metal is molded on these. It looks, it looks actually very realistic. Um, you know, the, the brushed gold component of it. It looks like petals of leaves. It's just beautiful. So um, for a dollar, I thought those were definitely worth picking up. So I'll have to go through my craft rhinestone um, bag and see if I have anything that I can use to replace that stone. Um, okay, so this little dude, so adorable. I saw him. Um, they had another section with like a pegboard and they had some jewelry on this pegboard as well. There was jewelry everywhere. Um, and so this dude I saw and I recognized it immediately. I know this is Crown Trafari and these mushroom pins sell very well for Crown Trafari. 
Um, there's definitely like a collector out there who's looking for these mushroom pins and just gonna take it off the back. And so this was $3 and this is a beautiful swirl blue loose site. Um, studded so you can see right there it's got the little studs and uh, the coloration on this is pretty unique I love that it's a swirl blue site and again this was in very good condition nice and clean and shiny and and marked with the crown trafari mark um, in the upper right hand corner so I you know picked this guy up I thought he was absolutely adorable I know that these sell very well pricing 40 to like $55 or so so definitely wanted to snatch that up. You don't see them very often. So I was excited about that. I got this, another brooch um, for $3. I got this multicolored um, sterling silver fish. He looks like a little angel fish. He's really cute. I'm gonna take him off his card. And um, you know, this was marked Mexico sterling silver. He's super heavy. And he's got copper and brass components to him as well. A very heavy little dude. Um, all kinds of markings, maker's markings, silversmith markings on the back. Made in Mexico. Um, has the code there for that, for the silversmith who, who made this. There are some additional stamps on here that I have to look at a little bit closer. Um, but it, you know, it does have the 925. I just thought he was adorable and he's very heavy and substantial for $3. I really wasn't going to pass up, uh, this little dude either. He's very heavy. This is another pair of, uh, uh, crown trafari. Um, thermoset clip earrings blue thermoset stone swirled blue and again very shiny gorgeous condition um, practically looks unworn and again you know like I said I love some thermoset jewelry and I thought that these were just really beautiful earrings and they're they're pretty heavy uh, in fan just fantastic condition. So I wanted to go ahead and grab those as well. Those were $2. I'm gonna go for a necklace. This is a um, Goldette necklace. I don't see Goldette that often occasionally here and there, but for the most part, I, for some reason, I just really don't run into gold at, you know, I feel like sometimes I wonder if, you know, we have regional, we have jewelry that's like regional specific. Like if I, if I would be more inclined to find, I don't know, say Sarah Coventry, for example, because Sarah Coventry is based in, was based in the Northeast in New Jersey, actually in Trenton, New Jersey. So I wonder sometimes like, I don't find that much Sarah Coventry. And I wonder if that's because it really, um, you know, was available more in the Northeast than in the South. Um, so I was excited to find this Goldette piece and this is just stunning. It's a gorgeous multi-chain um, Goldette with a gorgeous clasp closure and it has this kind of, um, you know, kind of like carved glass inset, almost like a cameo type of design here. Ooh, going out of focus, folks. I'm sorry. Um, gorgeous. I mean, I think this is actually intaglio. So gorgeous intaglio. I might be wrong. You all let me know. I think it's intaglio. And I love the bezel set crystals in the necklace as well. Um, really beautiful. I looked this one up really quickly as well. And these were selling for about like 55 to $75. So um, I saw one, they had one in black, like a brushed black kind of like gun metal with a black intaglio piece. Uh, I didn't see this specific crystal and gold tone one, but very similar. It looked like that there were some, several styles um, made from this mold of this jewelry design um, that were floating around. So that dude was four, he was four dollars. Um, go right here. Um, this was, this one was two dollars. And this is just a listener, another thermoset piece of jewelry. This one has like a baby pink uh, design um, box 
thermoset plastic design and I thought it was interesting because it's got this two-tone pink chain here and a little hook closure with the listener marking on it there so again I just thought this was very pretty I haven't seen too much of this like square kind of thermoset design and I thought it's modern it's kind of feminine um, and f you know for two bucks I was definitely gonna grab that so just pretty pretty kind of like mid-century modern plastics um, from Listener in a baby pink. Beautiful. I'm still going, folks. We're still going here. Hope you're having a great weekend. I have to tell you, like, this estate sale, like, really, you know, just made my weekend. <laughs> it was so exciting. You know, it's a small house, um, but the people running it were you know, sometimes folks get out of hand with the pricing at estate sales. Um, you know, I don't know what they think they're selling or they try to get retail, um, you know, prices sometimes for things. And I, I don't think that's the right approach either in estate sales. Um, but their prices were fabulous. So um, this is a beautiful brooch, gold tone, brushed gold, pearl and rhinestones. And this one is, let me just double check. This is a crown trafari piece as well. Okay, see if I can come in close. Now the trafari is right over here, the crown trafari mark. And I think I thought this was very beautiful, very large, substantial piece. Um, nice mix of pearls and brushed gold. Um, it is missing a couple of little tiny, teeny tiny rhinestones right at the ends here. Those were very inclined to pop out of jewelry pieces because they were so small. Um, and they're at the end there, so there was not like a lot of tension on the setting. So I'm going to see if I could fix this. I think I might have pieces with these teeny tiny. I mean, those are like probably less than a millimeter in size. Very teeny tiny. So I'm going to see if there is any pieces I can use to like harvest a couple of crystals for to repair this and just um, make this guy whole. But again, he, so this one was $2. This is a beautiful piece. Um, lovely crown trafari design. Again, um, so much, so in, in, I'm getting tongue tied. For the most part, this guy is in good shape. Uh, a couple of minor little missing crystals and if I can repair it, I think it'll be fantastic and, and likely probably worth about 45 uh, to $50. Um, moving right along here, I have another Crown Trafari brooch, um, also in a gold tone, brushed gold tone, and this one has um, aquamarine navette, beautiful navette set crystals, rhinestones with a little bit of clear detail as well. This guy, unfortunately, so he, this one was a dollar. It is missing a um, rhinestone right back over here at the top. Um, so I'm going to see again if I have harvestable crystals from some of my scrap stuff um, to go ahead and fix that. And if I don't, I think that this is likely 11 by 5 size that um, I might be able to find a replacement for that. So, and that's what the back looks like. It's open work, gold foil backed rhinestones, and again, just uh, the Crown Chafari signature. Um, right there on the bottom so you know this dude um, he does need a little bit of repair but uh, again I thought for a dollar it was worth picking up and you know if I can't repair it then this could um, become a piece that I pull pe uh, pull crystals from to harvest but I think I hope that I will remain hopeful that I'll be able to find that crystal and fix that dude up I have a beautiful listener, um, again, lucite or thermoset plastic bro um, brooch, in, again, in this robin egg blue hue. It's absolutely gorgeous with clear ro crystal rhinestones in between. Um, nice, beautiful, organic leaf design here uh, in great condition, nice and shiny, no condition or wear issues. Um, with the listener signature right on the back. So uh, beautiful silver tone jewelry, this amazing, gorgeous robin egg blue tone. I'm, I'm loving this piece. Stunning. 
and um, this one was three dollars. Okay, right, let me go for another pair of earrings. This one is a Crown Jafari, and these are again uh, clip on earrings with the left and right ear, and these are gorgeous with a stunning fuchsia, fuchsia rhinestone um, detail there Br again brushed gold rope design and look at the color on those rhinestones absolutely gorgeous deep fuchsia color um, uh, these just I saw them I snatched them up these are gorgeous in fantastic condition no wear no issues whatsoever these look like they may have been purchased like yesterday um, but they weren't. They were likely purchased in the early 60s. Um, so these are just in stunning condition. I like it almost forms kind of like a heart design here. Um, I think these are just gorgeous. That fuchsia rhinestone, not something you see every day, not a typical color. And for that reason, these are worth a little bit more. So if I do sell those, they'll probably be um, probably 40 to 45 dollars. Um, this one was um, $2 and it has some condition issues, so I'll share with that with you. And the, this is a Coro necklace and a gold tone Coro necklace with a red crystal cyan ruby colored rhinestone detail. And, um, you know, with Coro, you see this very kind of like organic branch leaf design uh, a whole lot. And again, unfortunately, this dude, he is missing some stones. So you can kind of see like right here, there's a missing rhinestone. Right here, there's a missing rhinestone. So there's a few stones that are missing. But a typical, very typical size of rhinestone, likely like a three to four millimeter size stone. And a uh, Siam Red Ruby is, is, is the color of what this is. So I think that this is repairable. So um, I do have a source that sells vintage rhinestones very affordably, I might add. Um, so I might go onto that site and see if I can find um, those stones to replace some of them. So once that piece gets whole, I think it would just make a, a gorgeous necklace. And um, I just think it's stunning. I love the color of it. And again, this guy was, he was $2. So I wasn't going to turn that away. Um, and like you could see, just a great little hang tag and the Coro is marked um, right here on the hook. So yeah, I was going to snatch that up. I'll save it. I'll save it from, I don't know, wherever it might end up going if it didn't sell. I got this really funny little um, bullfighter brooch. I'm gonna take it off the plastic, off the um, backing, so we can see it a little bit better. It's almost like a Damascene, um, probably like a little tourist brooch, like from Spain. But I thought it was so cute, um, you know, the little bull, uh, the bullfighter there. Um, you know, just again, not something that you really see every single day. And so um, I thought he was very cute, and I enjoyed it. So that's something that I grabbed. Almost done, folks. Got a couple of pieces here. Um, these are clip earrings. They are unmarked. They were extremely heavy. Uh, they do have a patent number on the back. I was trying to read the patent number and see who the patent was registered to to try to get a gauge on who made these. Um, they're extremely heavy. I just love the look of them. I thought they're very kind of modernist looking. They're kind of like these discs. Um, they're very heavy. And so they just, to me, they seem to very quality. So I, I just need to continue to research these. The patent number is written on the back of the clip. I'm hoping that the patent is relative and not the, um, and not the earring, um, not the clip. I hope it's the designer. And a couple, two pieces left. Um, and they're pretty much their their show sho showstoppers. I'll say. This is a stunning Beaucher Art Deco uh, choker necklace. Absolutely stunning. Rhinestone, rhinestone detail in between each of these shells. 
Um, it's just unique. I have never seen it. I couldn't find comps of it. Um, and it came with the matching brooch. Just how stunning is this? Art, it's Art Nouveau, um, borderline Art Deco. You know, they're both signed pieces. Marcel Boucher. This one has a number on it, so it's actually numbered. And so late 1950s, just absolutely stunning. You can see there's all of the rhinestones in between the shell detail. Um, in very good condition. Boucher jewelry was very high end. Let's see if you can see the signature right there on the back. gorgeous I just love this I love this piece so much um, I was not able like I said to find comps for this uh, similar pieces of Boucher jewelry um, sells about 150 up to about $200 um, but you know with this being a set I could um, get a decent amount of money for it so not something that's around anymore um, and just absolutely stunning so I was very happy with that purchase as well. And, and this one was more money. This was $12. So that's it, you guys. Um, like I said, it was just like such a fabulous, fabulous estate sale. I came out of there just like on an absolute high. So many gorgeous pieces of jewelry. I couldn't handle it. Um, tell me what your favorite piece is. I mean, I really love the Alice Cabanas piece. I think it's so unique and different and something you just do not see. And, of course, I do love this gorgeous Boucher um, rhinestone piece as well. It's absolutely stunning. Um, so much gorgeousness. I just can't even handle it. I wish I lived. Some of them, like, I, I'm in living in the wrong era. I should have been born in another era um, where this is everyday clothing. <laughs> Um, you know, but instead, you know, we we're, we are where we're at. But anyway, I, I so appreciate you guys for tuning in. Like, tell me what you think. What's your favorite piece out of this entire collection? Do you think I scored? Um, let me know your thoughts. Give me a like on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. Bye.